that. If you don't want to protect them, if, and that's on you. Their blood is on you. Mad Max guy, hey, right? Please don't touch me. Do not touch me. Well, I'm sorry about listen, that. Don't touch listen, me. Listen, listen. If you want to stand out here. Don't and touch you wanna, me. If really? You stand What's your out problem? Here, <laughs> get out of my face. <laughs> if you want to stand out here and create this You're just a funny looking out of my face. It's going to go down. You don't want to me. Why not? Get okay, out of my face. Arrested. Please. Will you? Go on. We're having an interview right now. Are you? Get out on. of my yeah, face. Please. Go on. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Get you. Get the camera on this guy's face. He's out of his mind. Hey, don't do anything. Stop. What's up, guys? Nuance Pro checking in. We're here at the NRA convention here in Houston. Let's go talk to people, see what's going on. All right, so why are we out here today? Uh, Test against the NRA holding a convention three days after a shooting, school shooting. And what do you think should be done? I think regulation should be put in place and maybe not give all the teachers guns like some of the politicians are saying. If the cops can't handle it themselves, like they were inactive the entire like Rob shooting for about an hour or so, not an hour or so, but an hour-ish after. Um, sorry, I get nervous. What kind of regulations do you think would be effective or that you would like to see? Uh, I don't know, but perhaps less of the whole 18 year I could go and get a gun with no background check or anything in this state, and I, that's probably a problem. I have severe mental illness. I shouldn't carry a gun, but I could go get one if I wanted to. And that's a problem. <laughs> so, like, obviously, in this case, the shooter did get a background check. The shooting earlier uh, in Buffalo, New York, the person got a background check. Is there anything in addition to that that you think would maybe, like in this case in particular, have stopped the shooting that you would like to see? Unfortunately, I'm not educated enough to really give my opinion on this at the moment. I hope to be soon. Okay. And obviously, you know, mass shootings in this country are about, I think, less than one percent of the homicides overall in the country. The vast it's majority. The number one killer of children in America at this point. Mass shootings in particular? Or? Guns in general. This includes suicides and gang violence, but that regardless is a problem. Absolutely. So, but do you think that, like, so, like, what are some concrete proposals, I think, to stop the majority of that, do you think? Unfortunately, I, I don't know yet. I'm sorry. No worries. It's all good. Um, yeah. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No. Right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Why are we out here today? To protest gun control. I mean, it's nothing really going to happen, though. I mean, unless we elect Beto in November. All right. And what kind of regulations or rules would you like to see? Well, first of all, background checks, banning assault rifles. I don't know how they're going to get them off the streets, the ones that we have now, though. So, you know, that they've already sold. But banning assault rifles, number one. And then their little background checks, if that's going to help. There seems to be a lot of confusion around this term assault rifles. People use it a lot. What does that mean to you? The ones that are like automatic, semi-automatic, the ones that are designed to kill people for the army, not for people that live out in your rural areas where I live. What are they going to do with those guns? What are they going to do? Go shoot their hay bales? Well, you said automatic and then you said semi-automatic. Well, like, I'm not a gun one? person, so I don't know. I just know the ones that, you know, that have the whole bunch at the same time so like an automatic weapon it's like you hold the trigger and it sprays bullets yes, like like right? in the military or whatever right and those semi-automatic may be a little slower semi-automatic just means like every time you pull the trigger it shoots one round kind of like a handgun or whatever okay. so are you su are you supporting well, okay. a ban on the automatics or the semi-automatic well, i would like it on everything but that's not going to happen but auto automatic at first you know we don't need those why would we have those so like n n none of the mass shootings have been happening with automatics by the way they've been no. highly regulated since 1934 but the semi like you you said you want all guns banned is what you said you want all of them i would like all guns banned none of this would even happen but it's not going to happen i mean a country like mexico for example they have basically a gun ban. i think they have one gun store in the entire country and basically no one really has the right to keep and bear arms there but they have a much higher homicide rate than the united you know states why? because they're coming over here and getting weapons over here and smuggling i saw that on the news last night there's we're they're getting weapons from over here Sure, but it's also happening in island nations with really strict controls where it doesn't okay, have easy like access. Not like here, not the well, number. It's higher, higher homicide rates in places like Jamaica or South Africa, etc. What per capita? Per capita, and in some cases even total. Yes. Well, I don't, I don't think I believe that, but. No, I mean, you think I mean, South I Africa? You think South Africa has a lower homicide rate than well, we do in the United States? I haven't States? looked, but I know that we have a big problem here. 
Yeah, like what what are you on dates? We're here. This is Texas. We, there's no reason for us to be talking about other places. We need to worry about what's going on here. Then we can maybe do something about that. Yeah, but I mean, if we're talking about policy and we see how it's affect, you know, it's gone into effect in other countries, like, wouldn't that be a way to say, okay, if it worked there or didn't work there, it may work or may not work here? Yeah, but that's the thing. Our the people that we have in government right now, they're not listening to what's working. They're listening to the money that's coming in from the NRA. They're listening to businesses who are paying into the governments lobbyists that will pay that you know what happened so what did Abbott do he made it uh, legal to buy a weapon like this at 18 why he he slashed mental health well, he didn't make it le- I mean it's already been legal in Texas he made way. it even easier for young people to access it I do believe we need to have our guns I believe in the t- second amendment I have guns at home I am a good shot I train I know how to break them down I know how to store them but that's the issue we're focusing more on people having access to these tools because it's a tool it's not a it's not a toy we're trying to make sure people have access to, to military-grade tools. We're civilians. We don't need those. What do you mean by military-grade? You know what I mean. You know that, that the AK-47 was created for military. It was created for war. It was not created for civilian use. And generally speaking, like it's almost impossible to get a fully automatic AK that was designed I, for... Uh, for sure, military. sure, sure. I'm not going to get caught up in semantics. The it's issue. kind of important if we're designing policy. Yeah, I think this is not serious media. I think yeah, I don't think it's serious media either. Yeah, they're, they're, they're yeah, I, hey, it still needs to be said. It still needs to be said because even if people who are, are not wanting to have a good, you know, real conversation. Don't say what you want to say. It's changed why it's to say. So don't I mean, this is a message for the audience. It doesn't have to be like convincing me or even convincing the people at the NRA. I'm not trying this to convince is... anybody of anything. I'm just trying well, to let y'all we know, wanna... like, no the, NRA. the NRA is a social welfare program. They're tax exempt, and they're a business. They're a business. They're here for the gun manufacturers. They are no longer here to teach us safety and education about firearms. They are no longer here to make sure that we are well versed in how to use, store, uh, anything having to do with firearms. We need to be training people this stuff. It needs to be taught. A lot of people believe that we need to have our Second Amendment right because that is a right. So you mentioned earlier about like policies that work here in the United States. What are some examples of that, and maybe in certain states or locales that you feel like work that should be implemented nationwide or in other places? Um, to be honest, I'm not super familiar with anything that works in the states right now because there. All I know is is we've had over 200 mass shootings this year. We're not even halfway through the year, and nothing's changing. Like these, the, the people here. It seems it, it seems like they don't understand the deeper root issue. What it, is the deeper root issue? We need to be caring for people, and we're not caring for people. We're caring for things. We're caring for money. We're caring for uh, productivity, and we need to be caring for people. Do you feel like the people who are attending this conference don't care about people, and they don't want policies that would maybe reduce these happening? I can't from speak for them. I can't speak for them. I can't. I'm not a mind reader. I don't know what they believe. But I know what I know what I believe, and that's that's why I'm here. That's all I can speak on. But you said you're not familiar with policies that work at the state level, level or whatever. But then how are we going to solve this if if we don't have like real policy proposals? I'm not a policymaker. That's up to policymakers, and it's up to us to let our policymakers know what we want. As informed have. voters, like we elect these policymakers, isn't it important for us to educate ourselves on issues we're passionate about so we can lobby them and say, hey, pass this bill, for example, pass this policy? I am i don't care about lobbying. We shouldn't be lobbying. Lobbying needs to go. But, but then how, do, how, how does any law get crafted? Like, that's what people need to advocate for the laws they want to get passed from their representatives. Yep. Cameraman too? No talent. Probably not. I was a candidate. I was a candidate in this last election. Yeah, what? So uh, why are we out here today? Because it's been past time to renew gun, re- uh, to look at our gun, re- sorry, gun, I'm really nervous, I'm sorry, it's all good. <laughs> to look at our um, gun reform because there's too many people lost to this issue already. Sure. And what would you like to see get done? I would like people to see that guns are not valuable more over um, 
uh, children, anyone in the street, um, more important than the safety of everyone. I don't own a gun, my family doesn't own a gun, but the fact that someone who may not have any idea of how to work a gun can just buy one when they turn 18 is very concerning to me. And I, I live in fear of it. A lot of my teacher, a lot of my friends are teachers, so we talk about this all the time. Sure. Is there any specific policy proposal you'd like to see passed, like federally or on the state level? Yes, I want to see background checks. I want to see universal, uh, just universally. I want people to see guns more strictly. I don't want people to be able to buy them as easily as they are right now. I'm not going to lie. I don't know everything about the politics behind it, but I just know what I see in the news, which is too many people are dying. And I just want universally background checks and reform. Is there a state in the nation or maybe even a country that you feel like has model uh, laws that the U.S. should follow and maybe you know they had like a higher rate before and these types of laws have made their, the society a lot safer? Um, from what I've seen, like places like Denmark <laughs> and nations like that, um, I don't really know a particular state in the U.S., but the model of Denmark, for example, having universal hair care, universal health care, and more attentiveness to the people rather than who's the politics running, the politicians running it, is something I want modeled in the state. Well, with respect to Denmark's like gun control laws, was it like a certain way before, and then in a certain year it changed, and like it made it like a difference to you, or what's going on there? From what I see, they just have a better environment overall. Like a good example actually is Japan. Japan, they have a really big process of making sure you can have a gun. I saw a tweet about it. I don't remember exactly, but they have interviews with the people interested in buying the gun. They have. Uh, a lot of medical research. You have to do um, a lot of uh, background checks on that. And compared to you, the U.S., where you can literally go to Walmart and find them in Iraq and buy them. Sure. But um, in Japan, like almost nobody owns guns because of those types of regulations, and it's also not a big part of the culture. They've had severe gun restrictions for a long time. Do you feel like, given that it's a constitutional right here in the United States in the Second Amendment, that such types of restrictions would disproportionately, for example, affect minorities and people of color? Yeah. Um, yeah, you could say that. Um, I would also say that when the laws were written for the Second Amendment, right, it was when guns weren't as accessible, not accessible, but as you can't shoot a million rounds in one minute. The technology was older, yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's, I mean, I'm not saying take every gun right now. That's the drastic step. But I'm saying AR rifle, AR-15, the ones that have been documented um, for the recent shootings, those for sure need to be looked at, taken away. And that's the first step. What is it about the AR-15 in particular that you feel makes it more dangerous than other types of guns used in homicides? Mm. Well, I don't know much about guns itself. I'm not a fanatic or anything, but from what I've seen, you don't need to take as much time to reload it. And that's some... Well, like, how so? Like, what does that mean? Like, like what's, what, what's different logistically from, like, an AR-15 reloading versus, like, uh, a semi-automatic handgun? Yeah. Mm. I'm not going to lie. I don't know. <laughs> I just think overall... The fact that you can just, I think it's a uh, handgun, it's six rounds, right? And no, it's That's not. That's like, like a revolver, but they have revolvers that hold more, but a normal, like, standard semi automatic handgun has, like, a magazine. You know, like, you see, like, how they load the cops yeah. loaded like that. That's, like, your standard handgun, and they can hold, like, standard 17 rounds, 20 rounds, whatever. Hmm. Well, I think this is a great example of me not knowing much about the subject, but. Is it something you'd be more interested in educating yourself on? Like, have you ever shot a gun, for example? I've never shot a gun before. Do you think, like, in order, it would be, like, good if you wanted to really understand, you know, policy making and this issue, like, maybe going out, learning more about guns, like, things that you fear. You know, a lot of people oftentimes fear what they don't understand. That's probably responsible for a lot of problems in our society. Do you think, like, you would take that step to go... I, is it fair to say you fear guns a little bit? I fear guns. I fear guns, but I also fear the people who are so able to buy it. Do you feel like it would be a, a, a step in the right direction for you to educate yourself on this topic, go out, shoot a gun maybe, and learn about it a little more? I feel like it's disrespectful to imply that I need to learn more about guns. I feel like the people... You, you said yourself you don't know a lot about guns. Yeah, I agree, but like I was saying, um, the issue right now isn't I need to be informed. The issue is the people who are running the laws right now for allowing anyone to buy a gun like that, they need to see the issue right now around us. I don't need to be more educated. The people in politics need to actually care about what's happening. But if we're lobbying our legislators and we want them to do good policy, how do we know the good policy to advocate for if we're not educated on the issue? That's true. I feel like we should talk. I feel like there should be a better environment to allow us to talk about it. But also, when it's this drastic, where a shooting's happening basically every week, we don't have the time to say we should just get educated. It's it's drastic. 21 people are dead, 19 children, two adult teachers. Like, it's been passed. We need to get educated. We need to actually 
I don't, we want to do the right thing, though. Like, we, if we do do the wrong thing, we're just doing something because it's drastic and immediate. But we want to do the right thing. We don't want to do the wrong thing in the moment, right? Like, it could, it could maybe cost more lives if we do the wrong thing. So we, it's important to be educated. What's the right thing then? Oh, I'm just interviewing. I'm just asking the questions. I'm not advocating for a particular policy at the moment. I mean, if you really want to ask me, I'm kind of stepping out of my role here a little bit. Um, you know, for example, this shooting happened in a gun-free zone, gun-free school zones. Why didn't we have? more officers on the scene at the time of the shooting not later when they waited like an hour before they went in but like at the time you know having schools designed in a way that it's not easy for a shooter to access and you know children are one of our most prized possessions we protect everything in this country we love with guns that we deem important celebrities the president banks casinos etc why don't we do that for our children do you think that's a good step to take like protecting our children with the same type of security we have for everything else we deem important I feel like kids shouldn't have to worry about guns and they... But if it's a reality, like isn't that something we have to take, you, like you said, take steps now because these things are happening. Yeah. Do you think that's a good step to take? Well, that's a lot. <laughs> um, I think the fact that the shooter bought the weapon when he turned 18 knowing right then and then it was legal for him and then he traveled to a location knowing that there's children there to shoot adult teachers to shoot that should say any that should say everything about the situation but um, overall the issue the common factor in all of this is guns but to the but to the point I made because it didn't seem like you really addressed it like do you do you think police should be there to protect children no I feel like we should put money into the communities we shouldn't be funding more police because they didn't do anything when the shooting happened because they were they also weren't there at the time when it happened they came afterwards and they fucked up then but if maybe if they were there in the first place if we had people who were armed I mean the parents certainly wanted to do something maybe if they were armed and they had the ability to do something but we banned them from even carrying guns on that premises um, I think we have opposing opinions because the videos I've seen are police officers standing there at the school while the shooting was happening. Yeah. They're blocking parents. They got there afterwards, yeah, and they stood there for a long time. They stood there for over 40 minutes yeah. and I think to position it as if it's our fault for this happening is kind of not good. <laughs> but Who said it's our fault for it happening? I mean, isn't that kind of why we're here? We're saying like... In a, in a way, it is our fault for allowing these guns out there and things like that. Like it's the, the, the policies that we allow to happen or whatever. I think what I'm what I mean by it's blaming us. It's the politicians right now in our NRA center who are just sitting there while they're watching this happening and they haven't even addressed the issue. Or if they did, it's just ignoring it, which is a way in a way addressing. No, they could, I mean, Ted Cruz, for example, went on TV and said, you know, here are some solutions. Oh. He said in 2013, for example, he put out a bill that the Democrats filibustered uh, that would allow for money for schools, federal grants that would allow for more security at these schools, and the Democrats filibustered it. Do you think that's an issue? I feel like we don't talk about it enough. We only talk about it when it's convenient for politicians, and that's why it keeps happening. Um, I feel like as a nation, I'm talking to the camera, not just you. As a nation, we don't have enough uh, of a safe space to talk about issues like this without it being 50 50. Um, like, I'm okay with talking about this issue. I may not know a lot about it, but that's why I'm here to try to learn and see the people affected by it. And I'm not going to lie, I think also it's personality wise, I saw 19 mainly Latino kids, and I'm Latina. So I can't help but picture myself, my brother, my cousins, my mom, my dad. So it, it's a lot to factor in, but um, we just need to talk about it more. And I feel like the people who can actually talk about it or create that environment are the ones who are our politicians. So why are we out here today? Uh, we need to stop gun violence. Kids are dying. Kids are dying. Like, there's nothing, there's no other reason to put that. It's, what, what are we going to do to stop that? Uh, you need to vote. You need to go out and vote. You need to message your legislatures. You need to go to protests. You need to show up for your senators. You need to hold people like Greg Abbott and Ted Cruz accountable. Otherwise, this will keep happening. Obviously, people vote right now, but is there any policy proposals that you think we should push that would be effective in this? Uh... I think we should put up red flag laws. So I, I have a mental illness. I have a severe mental illness. I didn't feel like sharing it with y'all. But as a person with a severe mental illness, I don't think people with the same mental illness as me should have ac easy access to, like, weapons of war. I think if an 18-year-old can't drink, uh, they shouldn't be able to own an AK. I think if an 18-year-old can't go to Avis and rent a car, you shouldn't be able to buy an AK. I think if we're giving children, because let's be real, an 18-year-old is a child, I think we're giving children guns like that, then there's a problem. I don't believe there were red flag laws in the state of Texas, but in the previous shooting a few days ago, I'm sure you saw it in Buffalo, there were red flag laws there, there were universal background checks there. In fact, I believe the shooter would have even qualified under the existing red flag laws for, 
to be, you know, whatever and you would at call. At that point, we need to take it upon ourselves to protect our schools instead of like CCISD. That's uh, in uh, uh, what's it called? School district in our county. We're funding 50 million dollar stadiums instead of keeping our kids safe. So we need to fund protect, locking doors. Fob. So like uh, I can't remember the name. I saw a very interesting thing recently, essentially that we can put $400,000 $400, into any school and make it school shooter proof. And we don't. We keep making fucking sca but stadiums. I, I wanted to finish the red flag thing because yeah. he obviously qualified for the, the you know, being categorized yeah. under red flag laws. But they didn't do that. Like, what do we do when we already have the laws on the books, but they're also not being enforced like they, they were in New York? I'm not in a position of power. I just know it's not my job to know. And it, if, if it's falling on regular citizens to try and answer these problems, we have a fucking problem. You mentioned school security this is something that's not often mentioned by people when we have this conversation we all three went to school together and our school is not safe Clearview if you're watching this lock your doors because I'm saying clear I'm worried that my school is going to be the next on this list there, there have been there has been legislation in the past for example to issue federal grants to schools mm -hmm. to increase security yeah. whether it's like bulletproof doors or even like architectural changes and things like that and in some cases even oh, as well as fog systems as well as fob systems you can automatically lock sure doors yeah and even like you know like, like police officers and things like that there active have been security systems yeah. active security feeds that lead back to your police department well it's, it's yeah, simple things but, but, simple things but like th these have been proposed in the past, but they've often been filibustered. Sometimes not even by Republicans, but by Democrats. For like, I think Ted Cruz. Because uh, blue's not always on your side. Blue's yeah, but I think he. I, yeah, blue he, is the lesser. I know, but in 2013, I think he proposed one, and the Democrats uh, filibustered it. Why? Do, like, do you think that was a wise thing to do back then, or do you think like those federal grants should have been issued to schools? I think anybody standing in the way of our children being protected is a fucking idiot. So why are we out here today? We're trying to end gun violence and protect our kids protect everyone um, there's too many it's so easy for people to get guns and act and moment and kill with an AR-15 kill just tons of people in such a short amount of time that's not okay and, uh, what kind of policies would you like to see put in place to stop these kinds of things from happening? Uh, obviously background checks. I think we should ban AR-15s. Those are really the two biggest ones that come to mind for me at this point. The HRA bill that's been... The what? The HRA bill that the House passed a few, a yes. few years what is, ago. What is that one? I forget what exactly is in it. I think it uh, requires background for checks yeah. uh, for gun purchases, but the Senate hasn't voted on it yet. So we want things like that to happen. So you mentioned background checks. In the most of these recent shootings that we've seen, Uvalde and of course Buffalo, both shooters went through a background check or whatever. Um, they were using rifles like the type you were talking about. What is it specifically about the AR-15 that you think makes it so it should be banned? Like, how is it so different, for example, from like a semi-automatic handgun? Well, I think that I don't know too much about like guns in general, but I know that it just allows for a lot of carnage and it destroys literally the kids. You couldn't even tell who they were. They had to use DNA swabs because of the carnage caused by an AR-15. And the other thing that I wanted to say was that because of Abbott, now 18-year-olds can purchase guns when it used to be 21. That kid who killed the 19 kids purchased it the day after his 18th birthday. If that had not been changed, he would not have been able to get that gun. Well, no, I think buying rifles like that was legal even before Abbott was ever in office. I think that's been the case for decades. There was something that was recently changed about... I think it's with, uh, for example, concealed carry permits, which is usually 21. They changed it for people who have, like, protective orders. So someone who has, like, a domestic violence uh, protective order. So, like, these women who are... 18 and they have like a crazy ex-boyfriend they would be able to get a concealed carry permit is that something you're against yes definitely. You're, you're against a woman who has a protective order against her ex-husband being able to have the ability oh not to carry. the woman no, no that's what I'm, it is i'm that's against what, i'm against no, so that's the man the, no but that's the law he passed is to like allow that woman for example who has a protective order against a crazy ex-husband or boyfriend or whatever to be able to carry a gun yeah we just want safety we want safety first and foremost so whatever gets that to going whatever bills that we need to pass that's, that's our ultimate priority here. So something like AR-15s, it's, it's, it's a rifle, obviously. Rifles are responsible, I think, for about like 2.5% of homicides in this country, whereas handguns are the overwhelming majority. Why is so much of this conversation focused on you know, rifles that are responsible for so little of the homicides compared to handguns. I mean, they're just all, responsible for 19 kids to die. Sure. But in like Virginia Tech, for example, handguns were responsible for 32 people being killed. You can make an argument there, for yeah. each one. Each yeah, both hand, of them. handguns kill people. Yeah, no AR-15s, all those automatic rifle type guns, they're much easier to kill. Well, it's not an automatic, but like for, for like a handgun. A lot of the 
and at a minimum, at a minimum. A lot of the mass killings that we've had in the past 10 years have been from the automatic rifle type weapons. That's not true. No, they've, they've all been semi-automatic. They're not automatic. Semi-automatics. Semi-automatic. Like, like a handgun. Basically. Okay, well, if it's an easy to kill a lot of people with it, then we shouldn't be allowing them in public spaces. You mentioned the handguns. Is handguns, for example, something you'd support banning across the board? I'm not going to answer that one. Why is that? It's not. Is, would you support banning handguns, for example? I'm, I'm not educated enough at that point to, to, say, to, to answer that. Okay. Is there anything else you guys would like to say? Protect our kids. So why are we out here today? So we're out here today because it is an epidemic of school shootings, 18 year olds able to grab an assault rifle. Assault rifles aren't, or excuse me, ARs are the same for assault rifles, but ARs are used to kill people. They're not used to hunt, they're not used for your own protection, they're used to shoot people. We can't go to school without getting shot. Movie theaters without getting shot. Grocery stores without getting shot. We can't go on, walk down the street without getting shot. For what? And we have the police that are supposed to protect us Yet 19 children died. Those cops let that shooter go and kill 19 innocent children. Someone was telling me earlier today, walking around Houston's actually very safe, even though Houston has a lot of homicides. Like you were saying, you can't walk down the street without getting shot. So do you feel like Houston is a fairly dangerous place? It's somewhat dangerous, but definitely there's a lot of white supremacists here, which are more- Really? Oh yeah, there's a lot of white supremacists here. I mean, I just had an interaction with the white supremacists earlier today. What was he saying? Well. He came, he was at an abortion protest, and I went and interacted because I wanted to make sure he didn't counter with, or he didn't interact with the pro-abortion protest. Well, I went, and he got arrested for touching a girl, and he has, like, all this Trump stuff on. So I went to ask, I was like, how is jail or whatever, because he talked about he was going to shoot me, because I'm Antifa. So you recognized him from something before. Yes. Uh -huh. and, he, and he threatened to shoot me again. Wow. Yeah. So I, I see you have the Antifa flag and the shirt or whatever. It's it's a bit perplexing to me because I, I've seen a lot of like Antifa, I don't know, members, it's, it's a weird thing to say, but like in other states, they carry rifles themselves, things like AR-15s, mm -hmm. for example. Do you think like what they do with those rifles, like is that good, is that bad, should they have the ability to do that? Like what is your position on all this? So honestly, I understand why we, we bring guns now because the Proud Boys, we were peacefully protesting, walked around with ARs wishing somebody would do something to them. So, and the Black Panthers, they brought um, guns to the Jason Walker protest a few months ago. They've done a lot historically. That's, yeah, yeah it's part of their and, history. And when they're there, when pe other people have guns, the Proud Boys don't do anything. Because they go, when we were protesting in 2020, they were hitting us, pushing us back because we weren't armed. So, I don't, I, I'm pro-gun. I don't believe an 18-year-old should be having an AR. What do you think the age should be? I'm 21. And it should be where, as if you're taking a driver's test, where you go all through this training or whatever, instead of, because that kid, the 18-year-old in Uvalde, two days after he turned 18, went and grabbed guns, um, ARs. So, I mean, obviously people, like 18 is considered the age of majority, that's when you're able to vote, that's when you're able to, you know, be drafted into the military, in fact, even earlier than that, like 17 or whatever. But if, if people can go and die for their country, if they have the ability to vote and make decisions, uh, and we entrust them with that, why shouldn't they be able to, for example, to buy a firearm? If they're an, like an adult, like some people, they, they separate from their parents, they're not like, nobody's responsible for them at that point, and they have to be someone responsible for themselves, why shouldn't they be able to own a firearm? Well, when you're in the military, you're held to a high standard. You have people always watching you. You're supposed to follow rules or you can get in huge trouble. I'm 19, I'm, I'm not in the military. I will never fight for a country that likes to go to war. Um, but I'm, I'm like able to walk around freely. I'm able to do whatever I want. But when you're in the military, you are um, very restricted on what you can and can't do. For example, you can't go out and be protesting for BLM if you're part of the military. I think in uniform you're not allowed in to uniform, do that. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, in uniform, my fault. Yeah, in uniform. So, that and, and I'm not allowed to drink beer, but I'm allowed to have an AR. For example, uh, I think one of the things people have been talking about is like a recent law that Abbott passed that they said, oh, it lowered the age to 18. This was a law that if someone had like a protective order against like an abusive husband or boyfriend or whatever, this person would be able to carry a concealed weapon on them. Do you think a law like that is sensible? Like, so wait, so he was saying like if you were like a victim of like a... Domestic violence and you have a protective order, like a restraining order against a crazy abusive ex-boyfriend or whatever, should that person have the ability to 
you know, not just own a firearm, but carry a firearm at 18? Um, I believe you should be able to carry a fire, like, like a pistol. I don't believe you should be carrying an AR. So the, so, the, the, the rifle is the main issue, but even though, like, the vast majority of homicides in this country are with handguns. Yeah, well, majority of mass shootings are done by ARs, with ARs. Is that, I don't think statistically that's true. With mass shootings, yes. Like, when you use I guess it depends also how you classify them and, the, like, the different periods you look at, but I don't think that's necessarily true. Sorry. Well, I mean, at 18, I believe you should have a gun. I don't think you should have an AR. Because right now it's flipped. It's the other way. It's like you can buy rifles and shotguns at 18, but handguns are yeah, generally I mean, at 21. Yeah, I, I don't understand that. Well, it's I, because the, the vast majority of you know homicides are with handguns, and a lot of those homicides are by young people. So they feel like if you m limit handguns to people who are older, you'd have less homicides. That's, that's the rationale, I guess. Yeah. Um, I, I, the, to me, that just doesn't make sense on why we should be giving eight or like oh, not giving, but allowed to have i know republicans are saying everyone should have a gun or a teacher should have a gun which teachers don't want to chill, kill children so i think that's i just don't think an ar they would they would kill a mass shooter if if they wanted to protect the children right but when first off you have to have you should be having really like a good amount of training to have a gun teachers are already busy as enough as it is in the summer and obviously during the school year they're not going to want to shoot a child the cops are supposed to be the good guys with guns, but they're not doing anything. Children or teachers don't want to be talking to kids and be like, I might have to shoot one of these people. Yeah, nobody nobody would want to do that, but sometimes, you know, obviously nobody wants a mass shooting either, but if the, if the situation presents itself and it's life or death, obviously you're going to do what it takes to defend life, right? I just, I'm just saying, like, most teachers are not going to want to have guns, and obviously if cops have guns and that doesn't stop anything, why, why would teachers... For the teachers that want to, would you support their right to do it? No, I, 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 I wouldn't. trying to grab people on the way out and try to make them look stupid. What I'm saying no, is... No, that's not the that intention. I'm going to interview people in the NRA as well. coming out here and trying to make it seem like this isn't anything but the kids that just literally got murdered like 48 hours ago. Yeah, and you think and the people in there don't care about them? No, I don't think they care. Well, then you guys are delusional. Do you no, have children? You haven't said so. shit about that. Do you have children? No, no I don't. No, so you have no idea what it's like for us to drop off our kids every single day at school and tell them, bye, I love you, and know that that might not be, you might not see them again. You have no idea what that's like. You don't know what it's like to be a parent and never know if you you're going to see your child again. You think I'm not bothered by the shooting? You think I'm not bothered by the shooting? There's no fucking way that you're the same bothered you as me don't belong if you're out here asking right these now. kinds of questions right now. I mean, if you assume so. No, you're a piece of shit for even standing here and trying to These pretend that. These kids are dead. If you want to have open, yeah, I'm aware of that. If you, aware have of that. if you don't want to protect them, if, and that's on you, their blood is on you. Mad Max guy, hey, right? Please don't touch me. Do not touch me. Well, I'm sorry, about hey, listen, Don't touch listen, me. Listen, listen. If you want to stand out here, don't and touch you wanna, me. If really? You stand What's your out problem? Here, Get out of my face. <laughs> if you want to stand out here and create this kind you're of just a funny looking out of my face. How's it gonna go down? You don't want to. Me. Why not? Get okay, out of my face. Arrested. Please. Will you? Go on. We're having an interview right now. Are you? Get out on. of my yeah, face. Please. Go on. Please. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank Get you. Get the camera on this guy's face. He's out of his mind. Hey, don't do anything. Stop. Fuck you! Yeah. That's a sane individual, right? Hey, I know you interviewed me earlier. Can yes. you get your social media? Yeah, it's a Nuance Bro on YouTube. New? Uh, N-U-A. N-U-A? Oh, sorry. Yeah. N-C-E. B-R-O. There you go. On YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Nuance Bro. Thank you. <sighs> hey, so the only thing, the last thing I want to say. Sure. Hold on. Can we get uh, this on camera? Yeah, sure. Hey, so I'm really, I, honestly, I'm not trying to antagonize wow, people, but some people escalate it like that. Yeah, yeah, no. So, what I, so here's what it comes shit. across as. Th this, this. Can you, hey, excuse me. Can you let him talk, please? He's trying to communicate. Do you, would you like, would you like to be able to talk, or do you want her to interrupt? Yeah, yeah, whatever. I mean, here's the thing, dude. Here's the thing. If you're gonna come to this, like the way you're doing it right now, this is fucking totally what you're gonna get. Like this is what you're gonna well, I'm get. Gonna, I'm gonna interview people in the NRA as well, and I've done this before. And so you're just like, are you just trying to hit both sides? Is that yeah, what that's the point. And okay. then if, if it looks really bad on you guys, if you start yelling at me and the people in there are all calm. It should look bad on you. It should look bad on 
you. It doesn't look bad on me at all. You look really irate. I am irate. Yeah. 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 I mean, You're on the wrong you can, side of that. Okay, yeah. that's all you can here's say. The only thing, here's the only thing that I want to say. And can you just give me a second? I just want to thank you for being brave enough to come to downtown Houston, to Discovery Green, without your weapons. Go look up the homicide rates for Houston. And, I, and considering those homicide rates and the, and the percentage likelihood that this guy would have gotten mugged Please when he don't came touch down me. Here, Please don't touch me. I just want to thank his bravery. And let's put this guy up it's not about being for brave. being so brave that he would come to Houston, to downtown Houston, even considering the likelihood and the high crime rates he came without his gun. I mean, you're assuming that, but all right. That's fine. I, I just want to say thanks, man. You're all a brave right. man. There you go. Cool. Awesome. She's like trying to touch me for some reason. No, I'm not. I'm not touching This is like the mental illness. Oh, you just leaned into it. You touched me. Yeah, you're. this is a mentally ill individual. She's, she's your biggest fan. Listen, here. I support gun control. I don't think people like you should probably be able to get a gun. Or am I so, studying yeah. for the LSAT and going to law school? So that's that's great. I'm sure there's plenty of I mentally ill lawyers. Yeah, yeah. At least right now, I'll say he touched me. I, 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 no, highly encur I highly encourage you to do a false police report, okay? <laughs> thank you, thank you. I mean, do you want to do an interview? No. Okay, so you're a coward. Cool, awesome. Let's go. There you go. Cool, okay. Fuck your cousins, fuck your dad, fuck any child you're up having your entire life. Fuck this guy, fuck this guy, I'm recording him. Fuck this guy, if he touches me again, if he touches me again, walk away, walk away. Believe all women, believe all women, yeah, okay. Cool. It was not consensual. There you go. Leaned into the finger, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, that's the uh, one that you put up like an inch away from my shoulder. You're a genius. Yeah. Yeah, I hope you never become a lawyer. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, so um you saw what we just dealt with. This is uh you know, I understand it's an emotional issue. I appreciated that the gentleman came up a little more calm towards the end. I'm really not trying to instigate things here, but some people like they just they uh they lose their minds. And uh yeah. By the way, guys, I saw a lot of the media mentioning how, oh, they're banning people from carrying firearms at the NRA convention, so they're hypocrites or whatever. I can assure you, once again, I am carrying, so it's not a problem. Uh, you are allowed to carry. It's just in the area where the president, the former president speaking, and Secret Service puts up a perimeter. Otherwise, the entire time, everywhere, you can carry. So. Fake news. Why are we out here today? Uh, we're out here. I need to learn some information about more about gun laws and want to look at some more guns and some more information to educate myself. Are you a gun owner yourself? Yes. How long? Uh, about mm, seven, eight years. Okay. Mm -hmm. What was your What was your first gun? My first gun, my husband bought me, was a 21. I can. It, you can swap it as a shotgun and a 22. I'm sorry, 22 and a shotgun, so you can change it out. Do you carry? Uh, no. no not. Why not? I, in my vehicle. Yeah. No CCW? Uh, actually, I came because I needed a holster because I have a gun that has a laser on it, okay. so it needs a custom. So that would be for, for uh, carrying, though? Yeah, yes, for carrying. I want to carry. Okay. Do you have a CCW? No, not yet. I need to. I'm gonna so do that too. Obviously, there's been a recent tragedy, you know, that yeah. happened. Um, you know, it happened in Texas. A lot of people have been giving the NRA heat recently. I'm sure you've seen the protesters outside. Have you encountered the protesters outside? What do you think of what's going on out there? Uh, actually, yes. One was talking to my aunt when we got here in the parking lot. And it, what, they weren't nasty or anything. They just were. She asked what they were here for and told her. And I, I just told him he probably didn't want to talk to us. They probably wouldn't like what I had to say. I mean, I believe in the guns. You, I, the bad guys are going to get the guns. Who's going to protect the good people? When, I mean, I live in the country. For me to call 911, I'd be sitting there 20 minutes or more waiting for the cops to show up at my house. You know, so. Are there any, like, like, a lot of people out there are advocating for restrictions and things like that, regulations. Is there anything that you think that you would support or that would make a difference in a situation like that, or just in general when it comes to homicides, violence, and crime and all that? Um, it's just so hard because, I mean, it, I, I get I get why these people are out there, and I know the babies are important. I've got two grandchildren coming, but I need to be able to protect them from a bad person, or my children need to be able to protect them. And I, I've had surgeries. I physically don't think I could fight somebody off. 
I've got to be able to have a gun to defend myself. And what if they said they don't want to take your gun away? A lot of it's like, we, we don't want to take guns away. We just want something like universal background checks. Is that something you would support? Um, I mean, I, I agree with the background check. Okay. I mean, universal for like you know, right now, it currently for most states exists like where you go to a gun store, you have to have a background check, but like person to person sales, you don't have to have one in a lot of states. Would you support closing that and saying I don't universal? Know how, you, how can you close that though? How can you control a person making it illegal for them to do that? Um, I mean, I there's you're still going to get the guns illegally if somebody wants to get a gun. I mean, I mean but someone's also going to murder even if there's a law against murder, but at least we prosecute it and well, disincentivize like, it. In this school situation, if that teacher was had taken a class, had a license, or any of the, the adults, they could have defended and, and took that person out and could have saved a lot of them children in that classroom. But nobody had a gun to defend them. So you support armed teachers in schools? Absolutely. Do you feel Absolutely. like them having, like if they were to carry in their everyday life certain instances and situations, especially in schools that are a little more rowdy and maybe there's physical altercations, maybe, you know, maybe they forget their gun in the bathroom and then a kid like shoots himself. Do you feel like there's be more opportunities for there to be, you know, accidental discharges or even, you know, just really tragic People circumstances? Are, we need to learn our, what the laws are. We need to educate ourselves on how to carry and be responsible. I mean, it's, I don't know how I don't know how else to say it. I, I you know, I. It's my constitutional right to be able to protect myself and carry a gun, and I don't understand why. I mean, it's hard to explain. It's just there's just so much more to it. You know, I mean, I get it. I get you don't want people dying. But when our guns are taken away from us, our rights are gone. I had some people out there saying the people in this building don't care about the dead kids at the school. Is that is that true? That's not true. Not true. Not true at all. There's a horrific thing that happened. But how did that guy get that gun? How did he get in this country? Was he illegal? We're finding more things out. Why didn't the cops go in there faster than an hour? What, what took you them think, an hour yeah. to get into that? and get that guy. Were you disappointed by the response of the police yes. there? Yes. Because if somebody dropped the ball somewhere, I mean, they should have been in there a lot quicker than that. I mean, what about this guy? I, I heard something on the news about he had sent a text to somebody, some girl in L.A. What was in the text? Did she know what he was going to do? Could she have stopped it? I mean... We're not getting the whole story. You've got to wait, I guess, and find out what all the details are. So why are we out here today? Well, frankly, I'm out here today uh, because I love guns and the fact that there's 14 acres of them is uh, uh, filling my brain with just more joy than I could possibly imagine. Also, I wanted to look at all those losers out there because, uh, you know, they're leftist protesters and yeah. Well, obviously, they're protesting like, you know, it would be unconscionable to think that there would be as many as people that are out there uh, if there wasn't that tragedy just the other day. Um, what are your thoughts on what they're protesting, the tragedy, and solutions? Solutions. Uh, you know, one of the reasons why we're here, and one of the things that I like about this is historical firearms, right? The Winchester Model 1907 was the first thing that they would be that they would be scared about. Uh, first, uh, legally, today would be considered an assault weapon. 15 round box magazine, semi-automatic, intermediate caliber. Well, that's from 1907, and adjusted in infla uh, inflation adjusted, that'd be about $820 today. And yet, despite the fact that technologically this has been available to do that sort of thing for a very long period of time, it didn't actually start uh, until the very late 60s with the. Uh, the Austin Watchtower shooter. And then it really didn't pick up for a very long period after that, right? Uh, and it kind of got, uh, God, I think that Richard Dawkins guy, despite being a weirdo and me not really liking him, you know, philosophically, he talked about a meme, and that was the first use of the word. Uh, just kind of this contagious thought that gets around. If we could have five years of having better policies and not gun control that clamp down on uh, on the desire to go and hit soft targets, then it would get out of these people's head. It would it would be uh, it, it wouldn't be practicable and it wouldn't be something that would romanticize so much. And there's a lot of infrastructural things that you can do, right? Uh, zero people involved in the education process have any sort of tactical mind. 
Uh, they, they, and that, that makes complete sense. They're, they're mostly, you know, a very large majority women. They're liberal arts people. They have no idea about how to defend a static position and they have no idea about what, what might happen, right? Um, there are a lot of things you can do to, uh, w without, without se making a school seem oppressive or anything, to harden them as a target. Um, uh, and, and there's a lot of problems that they have. They evacuate. What, what are some of those things? Well, right now there's training ones. They evacuate people into a line of fire, right? Uh, they they have very terrible policies with regards to check like choke points, right? Uh, I believe that this guy actually made his way into a classroom after shooting around outside. Uh, you you should be able to to barricade something pretty easily both uh, I mean I mean and you can do that as a matter of construction and you know you can do that as a matter of, of training right those the kids the kids are kind of a workforce uh, you know like they shouldn't just be sitting there under a desk they should be piling the desk under the door right we need to train them to do that it's a basic barricade um, you know if you have a soft target that you're concerned about hitting then you don't need to just have one or two, you know, half-assed people walking around. You need the a Buffalo shooter talked about that, like that he targeted the place specifically, you know, saying low density of like CCW holders yeah. and things like that. But what some of the people out there are saying, and they're not saying that this would stop everything, but you know, and, and not even necessarily in these particular cases, but something like universal background checks that they say have overall wide support throughout America. Is that something that you support in particular? I mean, uh, due to the law, essentially that is what we have. It's not what we have. Well. It, unless you go through a private sale, well, that's right? that's that's what they're talking yeah. about. They want to close that. The, Do you support the, closing uh, that? The the number of, and I'll, I'll get I'll get I'll get to why I don't in a second. The number of private sales versus FFL sales in the country is very low, right? The vast majority of guns are sold uh, via an FFL, right? If if you ma if you make money off of selling guns, then you have to have an FFL. Private sales uh, are you know they, they're the, they're the same as any other. Uh, exchange of title, right, or exchange of actual ownership, right, uh, and it's very hard to differentiate them from a mere change of possession, right. Uh, and so, if if you were to institute what they wanted, universal background checks, then that means that that means that you know, if let's say that I go through financial hardship and I want to sell a gun, well, now I have to go through this rigmarole to 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 you know get rid of it, right. If I go and I uh, and my beautiful lady friend. Uh, says, well, you know, this guy's making me feel uncomfortable, right? Well, just just like with the Controlled Substances Act or with any other sort of contraband regulation, there is no difference between a sale and possession, right? So me giving it to her and then her keeping it. I mean, how are you how are you going to differentiate that between something that needs a background check or not? Uh, also, if well, if, what if they just close that off, if your like, family, yeah. well, if 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 your family uh, and uh, like let's say that your dad or mom or whatever has a, an estate, right, and they want to transfer it to you uh, in a will or or you know if they if they die without a will in intestate succession, right? Are you really going to make family members have to go and check in with the federal government? To, to transfer family possessions. What, if they, what if they exempted certain things like intrafamilial uh, transfers? Like they, they do that in uh, California, for uh -huh. example. You don't have to go to an FFL to do intrafamilial transfers from like a father to a, to a son or whatever. You still have to like do registration that you can do on the internet or whatever. But what if they had those, yeah, they, what if they had like those exemptions or whatever, but they got rid of some of the, you know, let's say it was like a, a girl that you know and you wanted to hand her the gun uh -huh. temporarily. Uh, what if they got rid of that and then they got rid of just like transfers and sales, would you support universal background checks? Uh, well, one, when you say if you can get around that, uh, just as a matter of legal practicability, right? Like, uh, you know, I spent I spent some time as a as a prosecutor back in my home state, home state, and uh, and have defended many criminal cases, and it's it's that won't be legally practical to separate the two. It just won't be because you're. You essentially have to you have to make it based on possession and transfer of possession. I think they do it in other states already. Uh, I don't know the legal regime there. It doesn't really sound like it doesn't really sound like it is something that would be well regulated on the upfront rather than rather than God. What am I trying to say? I got myself a, I got myself right back into a loop. Uh, 
You just think it would be hard to regulate, so it wouldn't it, be worth it, it to it, do? It would be hard to regulate, and also, uh, if, you're, if you're a private individual and you want to transfer your property, you should be able to do that. So, one last thing. I had people out there saying that the people in this building don't care about the dead kids at this most recent shooting. Is that true? That is, uh, that's ghoulish, quite frankly, to, to think that, and that's a sign that they are in a bubble. Um, you know, I don't know if you watched that, uh, God, social dilemma thing. Uh, but that, that recognizes uh, multiple principles of cognitive psychology about how people uh, want information that conforms to their own beliefs and they, they don't want to take in information that might contradict them. And they, they like things that make them feel emotionally evocative. Um, they think that they apparently have some sort of monopoly on compassion and justice and that's just not true. Uh, to go and accuse people of, one, uh, not being uh, horrified or two simply being callous because of uh, because of their own perceived uh, their own perceived uh, self benefit uh, it's it's bizarre and it doesn't really take into account um, you know the the actual relevant statistics of the people who you meet it uh, it's dehumanizing and it it, uh, it just assumes that essentially that we fetishize guns to the point where we uh, where we don't have any sort of consideration of others. So why are we out here today? See all the new goodies. New goodies? Did you find anything? Several. What was your favorite? The old double barrel stuff. Oh, so you're like a over under side side, side sort of side. I'm old side beside guy. Skeet shooter trap what? Just fun shooter. Obviously, there's been a lot of talk about you know the recent tragedy that happened. There's people across the street. Have you had any encounters with them? What are your thoughts on what are your thoughts on what they're? A bunch of crazy people out there yelling about guns did it. Nothing about people doing something. I've had probably a thousand guns in my life, and not one of them ever jumped up and shot me. You've had a thousand guns in your life? Yeah. Holy cow! That's, I like guns. that's amazing. How many do you cur I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to pry. You don't have to say, but like, how many currently? Probably only twenty-five or thirty. Used to have the a rest in a tragic boating boating accident. Is that what happened? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, so obviously they're here, like protesting the recent tragedy that happened. Um, they're calling for more gun regulations and things like that. Is there any room for you when it comes to gun regulations that you think could help, you know, prevent tragedies like this? No. When you prevent crazy people you'll prevent tragedies. But it doesn't matter if they've got a hammer, a gun, or a car. There's a little bit, right? They're crazy. I mean, they're gonna kill somebody. I mean, you can obviously kill a lot more people with like an AR than a hammer, right? Uh, maybe quicker, but not more. I feel like you get pretty tired after like smashing skulls. People can run away, right? You might be, you might be. Like, so one of the one of the measures they call for and like the media often talks about is universal background checks. They claim like 90 percent of Americans and even a majority of NRA members. I don't know how they get that statistic, but the, they say a majority of NRA members support something like universal background checks. Is that something you support? I do not. And why is that? Uh, because it's a personal it's personal invasion by the government. What, what kind of measures, whether it's gun control or something else, do you feel like should be taken in order to prevent these tragedies, reduce the likelihood, save lives, etc. More mental health problems. <laughs> more funding for mental health. Yeah, yeah. I, because most every time this happens, somebody knows that this guy's nuts. And the people that say it's not a mental health problem, anybody that goes out and kills anybody with anything is mentally wrong. They know better than that. Obviously, these have been happening more frequently in America, whereas, you know, I'm sure when you were younger, they didn't really happen all that often. I mean, I don't know where you went to school, but it might have been, I've heard it's common, you know, back in the day for people to even bring their guns to school back in the day. I don't I my gun to school every day. You did? Like, did you put it in your locker, in your car, or what? No, it was in a, in a pickup, yeah. You go, like, hunting in the morning or something, and then, like, leave it? Hunt it all the time. So why do you think it, what, like, even though there was... I guess, even in a sense, more guns in proximity to schools back in the day, even by students themselves, versus today. Why do you think they're happening more often today than they were back in the day? I well, that'd take a while to figure out. It's like a cultural issue or something? Well, kids grow up now with some kind of a little TV in front of them, 
24 hours a day, all the time they're up. Half the time it's violence, uh, no matter what kind, it's violence of some sort. I think it's, it's become a cultural problem, not a gun problem, a cultural problem. Is there anything else you'd like to say? Got you covered. Why are we out here today? Uh, checking out the NRA show and seeing what new products are out and, uh, amongst friends. Uh, you find anything you like? Oh, yes. There is a new revolver at the Beretta booth that is really cool. Um, it's a six-shot revolver, kind of. It's very pretty. It has a very sweet trigger on it. I'll have to check that out. <laughs> um, so, obviously, uh, there's, like, a lot of protesters outside related to the tragedy that happened recently. Did you encounter them? What are your thoughts on what they're protesting and what they believe and all that? Well, I got here early enough this morning I didn't see them, so it was a pretty easy um, walk in. Um, they're entitled to protest, hope they don't stop traffic, and I mean, I think maybe some education would do them some good about finding out what they're protesting. Sure. What do you think they should educate themselves on? Uh, just about gun rights, the Second Amendment, and why people carry, and that while what happened was really sad and tragic, it didn't go off by itself. That it. Like it didn't just walk in by itself and cause that tragedy. The gun didn't. There was a human behind that with um, a pretty sad heart. Some people out there told me that they felt like the people in here don't care about the kids uh, that recently died in, in that tragedy. What are your thoughts on that? Um, I think that's absolutely not true. I'm a high school math teacher in an inner city school and very much a Second Amendment um, supporter. Um, my school knows that I'm a Second Amendment supporter. My kids. I found out I compete, and... They found out, like it was a surprise, like you didn't intend to tell them, or what? Well, they found out on Instagram, so... <laughs> they found, yeah, they found out on Instagram. I mean, you know, just because I kind of kept it private, because I was a school teacher and didn't advertise that, because I don't think it's my job to educate them. That's not why I'm there in a school. I'm there to teach math. You're, 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 oh, you, wait, you meant the kids my, at the school. My I thought you meant your kids. No, 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 my kids, I'm a school teacher. Oh. And okay. they found out, and so um, I don't think it's my job to tell other ki people's kids the, uh, about guns. So I, that's that's I need to respect that. If if it was allowed for, I don't know, I don't, I would imagine it's not. But if it was allowed for you to carry at school, would you? Yeah, I, I think if teachers are wanting to do that and take that on, I think that's good. I I hope they don't leave it in their desk because I know I've had my phone stolen or something taken off my desk. So I would hope that they would have it on them because that's if something happens, you can't go. Oh, hang on, let me go get it from my desk. Unlock it from the drawer. Yes, unlock the it from the drawer. And I mean that's like not carrying one in the in, in the, the chamber. chamber. Or I'll put my seatbelt on if I have a crash. So one, one of the things that they're calling for, for example, that they cite has broad support among the American public, and in some cases they cite even like NRA members saying universal background checks. Is that something you support? Mm, that's tough. I mean, Second Amendment, Second Amendment. I mean, that's, that's uh, I, I can see why would they would say that. Um, there's probably some people I would want to... Um, that I don't think they should have them. I mean, obviously, the guy that walked into a school, I, but I don't know that a hindsight. I don't know that a background check would have found that though. Well, it didn't because they went through background checks, I mean, right? Yeah. yeah. So I don't know that that's going to solve the issue. A background check, okay. So you just haven't been caught. I mean, ha there's tons of criminals that haven't been caught at doing something. What, what do you think would help with something like this? Like, what what kind of legislation? Uh, what kind of policy changes would you like to see implemented to maybe reduce these things from happening? Well, like why didn't that why didn't that school? It's probably an older school. Why didn't it have a four-year to where that guy couldn't just walk in? Uh, why wasn't there some entry stop point of where he couldn't just walk down the hall and go to that classroom? Um, education about having guns on grounds or having those uh, officers or veterans or military personnel or however they want to look at it to present. Um, I don't know that there's been any trouble at schools that have that sign posted out front that says our staff is armed. Uh, you will be met with resistance. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so a lot of these shootings have been happening a lot more recently. They've been more frequent and in some cases more deadly. Why do you feel like this wasn't happening as often when you know you were younger, for example? Like, Why, why do you think there's been such a change? I think it's a 
maybe a change of ethics, morals, heart, just people lacking respect for each other. Why do you think that's happened? Um, times have changed. People just don't respect each other anymore. I mean, um, there used to be more of a respect for law. There used to be a more of a respect for order, and there's just not that anymore. People aren't being held to that standard. There's no, there's no bite. There's no teeth. And we don't know what's like caused that lack of respect, or like what's what's. No, led I mean, to that. some say mental health. Um, why? Why would the mental health like why? Why not back then versus now? I, 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 I don't know. I don't. I don't have that answer. Do you feel like some people say it's a lack of God? Do some people say it's just like cultural decay? Like. Do you, do you feel like those play a role? Well, cultural decay, okay, yes. I mean, the fact that there's protesters that believe that they can just go and block the street and stop everybody else's world because they're mad. I, I think that's, that's a cultural decay. I mean, people walking in and thinking they have the right to extinguish the lives of others because they're mad or they're upset. or um, That's cultural decay. And an entitled generation just thinking they can do that. And obviously, the Second Amendment's obviously not unlimited. It doesn't. I, I don't think anyone would argue it protects the right to own like a personal nuke or something like that. Uh, where do you draw the line? Like, do you think automatic weapons should be freely available for American citizens 18 and over? Or, like, where do you draw the line personally? Sure. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I mean, repeal the NFA. Like, what, what, what's your opinion? Um, I mean, it would be cool to have a machine gun, but then I don't know that. I think sometimes they make things taboo and then that's why it's wanted that much more. It's because they're being told no. So I don't know that if it was allowed that there would be that many people that had it. What about like artillery? Like where, where do you draw the line? Tanks? Which in some cases you can own in certain ways, but... I don't know. Why, why restrict anything? What about nukes? No, no restrictions on nukes? That's a whole different other chemical warfare. <laughs> I mean, if you don't care for that properly. Poison gas. Yeah, I mean, if you don't care for that properly, I mean, that's destroying people's water. And I mean, it's the same way you can't pour gasoline and oil, like if you're a, a salvage yard owner and pour all that, um, those chemicals in the, in the ground. There, there would be some care that needed to be taken so that you're not interfering with other people's livelihoods. Is there anything else you'd like to say? No. Right, thank you so much. I appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> that's a Nuance Bro on YouTube. So y'all are just walking around and interviewing people? Yeah, I did it outside and... Uh, I think you're our last one. Yeah, yeah, I think so. What's it called? Nuance Bro. New. A-N-C-E. Bro. There we like, go. bro? Right. Thank you so much. Thanks. Hey everybody, it's Tom Slocum. I've been out here playing cameraman for Nuance Bro out here. Just wanted to let you know we're having a great time out here. It's fun talking to all these fantastic people. Couldn't ask for a better Friday afternoon. Thanks again, man. Thanks for the invite. Tom's an awesome guy. Check him out. All right, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Social media links are in the description box below, as well as merch. Support us at nuancebro.com slash join, and I'll see you next time, bro.